contract before the Players Association releases the next month? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what I will say is, look, I mean, it's like any good negotiation, I think there's a bit of pain on both sides. But I think you saw it for Joseph, this was the uh, okay, so players' captain of the city's heart, and I think you know, there was a real love for the city, for our fans, and you know, that was clearly a factor here in terms of being wanting to stay, the way you feel comfortable with the way that this city's got behind the team. And, uh, so we were delighted to be able to tie someone at 25, you know, five in his career, scoring a goal a game, and to have him tied to the 2023 was, uh, was really exciting for us. Do you think you can break the league's all-time scoring record? I uh, will see. I mean, hopefully that uh, you know, he's, he's one of the five seasons of rating scoring, and uh, we would comfortably do that. But you know, we know that it's not always going to be easy. There's going to be ups and downs. But you know, our hope is that we'll be a top team where we're we'll creating chances for Joseph. And, you know, there's one thing Joseph is is you know one of the most unbelievable finishes of goals I've ever seen. And you know, if we think back to, to last season, we spoke at the end of the year about the goals and the way that he seems to just have more time than most people do. And then when you look at the final against Portland, you know, it's a great tackle by Parky, but you, know, you almost don't need to think about Joseph missing. There's 50 pound keeper and slotted in away. You know, he has that skill and that quality that is really gold dust in the world of soccer. Uh, and so to be able to have someone who's in the final career, who's proven that you can do that consistently, not just in you know, a 10-minute streak, but over a you know, two-season period, is something that you know, we're excited and hope that also there, and it's no secret, and you've talked about it, that the sustainability model of this club is, has a certain transfer policy of bringing in players that you can sell on for profits. How does this deal kind of represent a, a deviation or a flexibility on the club's part to not necessarily do that all the time? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, there might be a misconception in terms of sustainability. I think our model was always that we could, if I, if I go back to sort of 2014, when I sort of joined the club, the view was always that we could attract players see it as the end of their career and find a destination, but actually it's a hopping off point. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're always going to go off to the, to the next club. I think what, what I felt at that time, what I clearly have now, we can, we can show that in terms of what the whole league's doing is you can attract players of that younger, younger age group. And of course, the challenge for the league is it'll be those special players that want to go off to top clubs. But as we grow as a league, as the quality gets better, it's capital to take some of those players. Joseph's a good example. Joseph had been to Europe, it hadn't really worked out, he had a great chance here uh, at Atlanta, he took that opportunity. And I think it was something where he realised that you know, sometimes the grass isn't always greener. He's in a city with amazing support base, in a league that's grown and getting stronger. We've got Champions League, we want to be a club that's competing at the top. And I think from him, his feeling was this was the right place for him, obviously for us as a club, to be able to tie something in that could be a sort of bedrock of the team for the next five years was something that was attractive to us as well. So I think we're always going to be flexible, uh, but this was a great example. Of, you know, it's really difficult, you know, we talk about getting players and replacing players, to find someone who's screwed the goals and chose to pound is probably the hardest thing to do in soccer. So you know, for us as a club, it's great to be able to bring it into the 2023. With the in injury that has been on, are you all going to be in the market to try to find some depth at that right back or right wing back? Gallagher was worked there last year with the twos, but really on the wrestle, it's kind of a right footed right fullback. Right? Yeah, I mean, look, I think with everything, you know, the roster is always in a state of flux to about things and not just good and so we're always looking at that same thing. So, or our Frank goes on one way, the luckiest players there is, and it just he finished the season so well, and was you know, firing on the cylinders to come back, and it was just really unfortunate, and it's one of those trading ground and things. But, uh, but we do feel that we have the depth, and we've got a lot of pieces that slide around and we're always be looking to evaluate them. So I think uh, we'll see how the preseason goes, but we're always looking at those chances to strike them. But we're in a difficult scenario where we're in a Saturday camp with people, so it doesn't have as much flexibility as perhaps other countries. Can you give me your take on considering one of the market players in the league just decided to stay for five years uh fact that the commission in December did uh worst uh selling to the mentality. What is your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think everyone tries to sort of stamp a, a narrative on anything. Um, I think, you know, in the past, that was a comment that the commission made. Um, and I think, you know, on the backdrop of Alfonso Davis going for the big award here to buy Munich, I think that 
that clearly shows now that there's a credibility in terms of making the software and the players really bomb. And I think the reality is, by being a selling league, it just means that we're a part of the global network. Being part of the global network means that the right time for the right player and the you know, right price, then they will move on and go on to, to other clubs. Other players will stay. I think the important thing is, there's definitely been a, a sea change in terms of being able to attract those players at a younger age that consider it uh, a possibility either to you know, continue their career in America or to use it as a stepping stone. That's the important thing. We've certainly got to that level now, I think, where the league can, can go to South America, go to Europe and offer a possibility for a player um, rather than just what it had been in the past, which tended to be free agents at the end of their contracts thinking you know, it's going to be an easy league to go and play in uh, and they can spend half the time on the beach. Have you ever been to the Elmar? No. Except he's looking good at training. <laughs> <laughs> really good. You, you talked about Joseph and kind of the importance of signing him because of what you provide on the field, but was, is there also an element of just how kind of big of an icon he become in the city that made it important to tie him down? Well, look, I mean, I think there's a lot of factors. I mean, the one thing I would say for Joseph, I think he's matured as a player from year one to year two. I saw that in terms of, you know, another example I gave when he spoke at the MEP. Passing game to Miguel, but Miguel had won about 10 games without scoring, and Joseph actually had a chance to break the record. You know, he gave that assist, and I think that showed the maturity in his play. And he understands that now. Okay? He's a face of the franchise. He's got a level now where he has to be thinking not only of himself, and it's ultra competitive to see that way played on the pitch, but you know, the emphasis is the team that you know, actually United. I think we saw that. You know, he was obviously pleased to get the league MVP, but the biggest reward for him was us with the MLS car and being part of that team. You know, he understands that, he appreciates that. I think that's something that, that you know, we're excited to have, a player that you know, understands now that it's about winning trophies every year. And like, he's got a big part to play on, not only in terms of what he does on the pitch, but in terms of how he helps uh, his teammates, how he you know, performs in training, how he performs in terms of you know, being that uh, sort of face of the franchise. So he understands that. And look, there's no doubt that he's a character I mean, so many sort of favourite Joseph moments from when he broke the record in Orlando through to you know, scoring the goal he did uh, in the cup final. And he is a character, but that's great. And you know, it's one of the things we need in this league is to, to be able to have those characters that people, you know, I think it's true to say the city of Atlanta is one of the biggest sports personalities here. He transcends just not just the fans that are interested in soccer, but I think a lot of people in the city of Atlanta know who Joseph is because of the way that he wears his heart and sleep and the way he is on the pitch. And that's great because we're in the entertainment industry and we want that. We want our fans to, to have a guy that they can watch and identify with and you know, gives you uh, someone that just, however he plays, he's someone that you want to watch. But just a couple more. There's been a, a lot of talk and speculation and ink about how to solve the 4 DP problem. I know right now you don't have 4 as many players, but should that possibility come close, how do you solve that? Well, I mean, we're talking hypothetical, so yes. I don't want to answer a hypothetical question, but all I would say is roster components is starting off. So, so the reality is, by the time we get to the start of arms, that's when we have to have a roster that's compliant. So, you know, that's a long time. So. Do you have any favorite memories from the Northwest Cup in the off season? Um, favorite memories? Uh, I mean, I did, we went to the celebration party. Uh, again, for me, it was, uh, by the TV show Atlanta, so it's the sort of place I would normally frequent. Uh, <laughs> we're up on the balcony in the VIP area, and every time I pick the cup up, the whole dance floor just cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like we're on the show Atlanta. Oh, that was my, uh, my, uh, but no, I mean, look, uh, what's been crazy is I, mean, I can't believe we signed pre season already. <laughs> like, we didn't have any off season. Obviously, with the coaching change, uh, with the way that MLS is, is structured at the moment, it's better this year because the season finishes earlier. But, it was a wonderful time. It was amazing the way the city got behind us. I think my endearing memory will always be turning up to the parade and having that almost English feel of no one showing up to your party. And <laughs> so I was just glad as we went down the first road that people showed out. It was incredible people were up on the, uh, the parking decks <laughs> watching over. But then when we got to, um, is it Marietta Street, turn left to go past yeah. the, the College Hall of Fame, and then to see tons of thousands more people, I mean, that just blew me away. That was popular. The moment where I sort of felt the most emotional, that, you know, on a Monday morning freezing cold for Atlanta just to come out. It just showed how how amazing the city is, the support of the club. And, you know, we 
we're just now striving to, to do better this year and to keep striving to do better. Thanks, guys.